Hey guys, welcome to Principles with Corey and Logan. Thank you for making the time to listen in. Today, what you're going to do is you're going to get the opportunity to listen in to a, um, a, a lesson I was teaching to our leaders and our entrepreneur group, Legacy Builders on Think and Grow Rich on making decisions. I hope this adds value to you. And uh, what we're doing is we're really taking a, a look at the book, Think and Grow Rich from a biblical perspective perspective. And there's some lessons in here that I hope, I know they'll add value to you. I hope you'll just take them and apply them to your life. And hey, if you are a, a male leader, an entrepreneur, and you're looking for a group to uh, stretch you, to grow you, and to be in a growth environment, I invite you to uh, take a look at Legacy Builders. I'll have the link in the show notes. But before you jump in, I want to read you one of the main quotes from the book that sets this lesson up that you are about to listen to. It says, Analysis of several hundred people who accumulated fortunes disclosed the fact that every one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing those decisions slowly if and when they were changed. People who failed to accumulate money without exception have the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly and of changing those decisions quickly and often. So there's a difference between successful and unsuccessful people. And there's a habit around decisions that successful people have. And there's a habit around making decisions that unsuccessful people have. I hope you enjoy uh, this and uh, would love to hear some feedback. So you guys have a great day. Enjoy the podcast. Hey, leaders, and welcome back to our study here on Think and Grow Rich. And as we really dive into Think and Grow Rich from a Biblical Perspective, and today we are in Chapter 8, The Power of Decision, and uh, I'll tell you, Napoleon Hill just nails it in this chapter right here. One of my favorite chapters in the whole book. I love the story, too, um, that this, this chapter really reminds me of a story I heard John Maxwell talks about, and he says, you know, you've got five frogs, five frogs, and they're sitting on a log, and all five of them decide to jump off into the water. The question is, how many of the five got wet? And the answer is none, right? Because, because to decide to do something and to actually do it are two very different things, right? And I saw this big frame picture with the quote of Ben Franklin that says, well done is better than well said, right? And there are a lot of things that people say they're going to do, a lot of resolutions that people say they're going to make. At the time of this recording, it's December, it's getting close to January, and resolutions are coming out the wazoo, right? And people talk about the things that they're going to do. They say, I'm going to build this website. I'm going to start this aspect of my business. I'm going to get back into school. I'm going to get back into the gym. I'm going to jump into a mastermind group, right? Like legacy builders or something like that. And it's one thing to decide and say, but it's a whole nother thing to actually do, right? And so I think this topic of decision is just massively critical for us all, right? All of us, you know, and I shared with you one of my limiting beliefs early on in this study um, saying, you know, I'm waiting on God, right? And you hear people say that a lot. I'm just waiting on God. And really, I thought thought that I was just really being a patient person, <laughs> which is uh, something I need to work on. So I, I thought I was working on that. And the Holy Spirit is showing me that actually passivity had crept into my life and was, you know, was masquerading itself as patience. Impassive impassivity in indecision has a lethal potential, right? To really derail and to destroy the dream that God has entrusted in your life. No one, no one, there's no one else can do what you've been created to do, right? And other people can contribute to like missions in a significant way like you do, but nobody, there ain't nobody, no one can do what you can do. So you've got to decide and I'm going to, you got to decide I'm going to live the life that God has designed for me to live. And that, that does require decisions, right? You can't sit around and wait for winning the lottery. You can't sit around and hope that's going to happen, right? Noah didn't wait for his ship to come in, right? He built the thing. <laughs> There's a difference, right? He took the initiative and he made the decision. I like this Chinese proverb that says, he who deliberates fully before taking a step will spend his entire life standing on one leg, right? Indecision, y'all, it paralyzes us. Uh, let me just real quick read you a quote from the book from Napoleon Hill. He says in this chapter, he says, <clears throat> 
After analysis of several hundred people who have accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark. Now, just real quick, at the time of this book, this is 1930s, a million dollars is a big time thing. It's still somewhat a big time thing now, but that was like a very, very big time thing. So anyway, one more time. Um, he says, after analysis of several hundred people who had accumulated fortunes well beyond the million dollar mark, they disclosed that every single one of them had the habit of reaching decisions promptly and of changing those decisions slowly. If and when they did, they, they changed. But people who failed to accumulate money, without exception, they had the habit of reaching decisions, if at all, very slowly and of changing those decisions quickly and often. Friends, indecision breeds fear. If you pause long enough, if you hesitate long enough, uh, Leonard Ravenhill, he, he said that opportunity of a lifetime has to be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity, right? You have a window of time to act on things, but inactivity and indecision, it breeds fear. In the military, uh, when they're training the paratroopers, right, the, the guys that uh, in the airborne regiments, the, the guys that jump out of the planes, right, they understand if they don't get this guy out of the plane, if they don't, if they have a soldier that is kind of out of fear, doesn't want to jump out, they understand that they've got to get that plane back up there. They got to get the plane landing and get back up there as soon as they can and get him out of the plane and jumping, willfully jumping, getting pushed out of the plane quickly because indecision breeds fear. Inactivity breeds fear. The longer you wait to do something, it's it's that law of diminishing returns, right? Where you 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 say you're going to do something, you make a decision, but you don't do it, right? You say you're going to make the decision, but you don't do it. The longer you put it off, the less likely you are to actually do it. And I love this chapter on decision because it's it it moves us to action. It motivates us to actually take the next step. I can't, I can't take every single step in this journey in one moment, but I can take the next step in this moment. It doesn't even have to be a big and bold step, right? It may be a little baby step, but I'm taking that step. And one of the mindsets that you and I have to be reminded of is that failure is not fatal. It ain't fatal, y'all. One of the things that hinders us from being decisive and moving forward is that fear of failure, right? The fear of failure can be I'm telling you, it can be crippling. The fear of failure, it, it's crippled a lot of people. I, I've talked to people, they walk around on eggshells afraid of failure. Many people have been robbed of decisive action for far too long by the fear of failure. And I'm just telling you, you have to remember that you are not your results. Your results are your results. You produce the results, but you are not your results, right? So when you fail, it doesn't mean that your identity is a failure. It means the project failed. It means the initiative failed. But failure is an event, not a person, okay? You think about Jesus. Even Jesus had one of his 12 disciples fail, right? Judas betrayed him. Did that make Jesus a bad leader? Did it make him a, a failure? <laughs> not at all, right? He was sinless. He was the son of God. He was God. He is God. Scripture's clear on that. He was not his results as it relates to Judas's own personal decision, right? And people are going to make their decisions, and then variables are going to come. Things, things are going to work against our plans. Obstacles are going to come. We're, we're going to make mistakes. But failure, my friends, is not fatal. If we don't overturn that, that wrong mindset, I'm telling you, it's going to keep us paralyzed, and we'll be trapped in indecision and inactivity. And I, I just want to say right here, you are far too valuable to be sitting on the sidelines crippled up in fear. This world needs your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your ideas. This world needs that. And when you don't bring that forward, you don't only hurt yourself, but you rob the world of something truly incredible. Okay. So here's one of the things that, that can help you and, and help us to decide to, to take action. You have to focus and you have to choose. Uh, first of all, focus. The word decide, think about that for a second, decide, the end of it, side. C-I-D-E. Kind of sounds familiar, right? Because we have words in our English language like homicide, uh, pesticide, suicide. None of, the, none of those are really great words, right? Genocide, mass killing of people. Side, C-I-D-E. It means to kill off. 
And when you're deciding, what you're actually doing is you're killing off other options. When I decide, I'm saying I'm doing this. And by saying I'm doing this, I'm killing off all other options, options of other things that I could be doing. I'm making a decision and I'm killing off the options, right? I'm focusing. If we think about biblically, in the book of Joshua, as the children of Israel, uh, they were settling into the promised land and Joshua was, you know, he was dying off and the generation of elders with him, they were all dying off. But before he died, he gave this really famous sermon and he said, choose this day. Don't put it off, right? Decide today. Are you going to serve the Lord? Or are you going to serve the idols of the surrounding territories? What are you going to do? Choose this day. Make a decision today, not off in the future. Make a decision, right? Decide. So I want to encourage you to focus and to choose because here's, here's the thing. Sometimes Christian will say, you know, here, some of the, there's a couple of things that frustrate me about our brothers and sisters, but one of them <laughs> um, will say, well, God's in control of everything. And I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, God is sovereign and God is powerful, right? But we have a responsibility within his sovereignty. We have the responsibility to choose and to create. Not everything that happens in your life is God's best. You have the ability to choose and to make choices. God is sovereign and God is powerful. He, he is. But let me kind of illustrate it to you this way. I heard this powerful example that I want to share with you. Um, I heard this guy share it. He said when he was younger, he's about nine or 10. He said that him and his uh, brother would go for rides in the car with their grandfather. And they just loved, you know, spending some time uh, with their granddad. They would get in the car and he would say he, he knew the goal. He knew what the goal was. He knew the destination that they wanted to get to was they all wanted to get to Dairy Queen, right? They would get in the car and that was the goal to get to Dairy Queen. And so they would get in the car and their grandfather, when they went to visit him, actually lived in a town far away that they didn't really know. Uh, they weren't very familiar with. But when they were in the car, his granddad would say to him, and he's, he's actually sitting in the back seat, uh, my the guy's telling the story, granddad's driving and he's sitting in the back seat. Uh, he would say to him, which direction should I go, right or left? And they'd be at a stop sign and he, he wouldn't move, right? He would just stand, he would sit still and he wouldn't move until he told him to go right or left. I mean, they'd be at an intersection and the light would be green and the granddad would say, Josh, uh, that's the guy's name. He would say, Josh, straight, right or left? And, and he would involve the two boys in the process of getting the Dairy Queen, right? And he would say, say somehow, somehow they would always, miraculously, they would make their way to Dairy Queen. Now, one of the things you have to know is even though he was nine or 10 years old sitting in the back seat and wasn't familiar with that city, and when he, when he would say, go right, his granddad, he would actually go right. If they were at that intersection, he would say, go left, he would actually go left, right? Five minutes later, they would be at an intersection and, and he'd say, which way do you go? And Josh would say, left. You go left, right? And one of the things you need to know about this guy's granddad was that for 25 years, he was a mail carrier in that city. He knew every road that city had. It was like he had the grid of that entire city tattooed on his forearm. And whatever decision those boys made still wasn't beyond the scope of what their granddad couldn't course correct. And the same thing is with God. We have an incredible responsibility within the umbrella of his sovereignty. And, and friends, I just want to say to you, God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life. God has incredible dreams for us all. But we have to decide, we have to choose this day if we're going to step into those Step into those dreams and plans that he has for us, right? And my prayer is that through this study, that through Legacy Builders and the Leaders of Readers Book Club, that through the messages of, that we're doing uh, in Think and Grow Rich, that they would be used in the timing of God in your life to bring you uh, bring bring about a very real result in some tangible decision and next steps. And I pray that for you guys. I, and I do. I want you, I want that for you desperately. And I look forward to being with you guys in the next uh, study that we do. I hope today has added value to you. You guys have a great day and God bless.